Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Uh, happy Fourth of July holiday weekend. Happy birthday, America. Um, you know, I was thinking about this. We, we're uh, another year older, but are we any wiser? Uh, I think we have a, a long way to go to get back to uh, moral decency and, and treating one another as we'd like to be treated ourselves. And so, uh, continue to pray that God will, will bless us and uh, that he'll continue to mold us and shape us into the people that he longs for us to be. You know, I, I, I think about... Um, you know, sharing with the, uh, the 8 o'clock service how I do a, a self-evaluation for uh, my clinical studies, and then I have other people in the cohort group will evaluate me as well. And it's, it's interesting uh, sometimes to see uh, how other people view you. And um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it, it, it hurts a little. Um, but I, I pray that as people in the community uh, interact with uh, the, the members and friends of Zion, that they say... That, that we're loving, and that we're kind, and uh, that we're compassionate, uh, that we're striving to be like Jesus in, in a hurting world. And, and I think people desperately need to know that we truly love them. It, it's not about nickels and noses, but about Christ and, and him crucified. So that's our, our job, to make our light shine brightly in the communities in which God has placed us. And so it's good to be here with you today. Uh, we have a few announcements. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, on uh, the Sunday School Association on uh, Friday, August 5th, is going to be having a meal at uh, Shady Maple. Uh, those of you that have been there, you know how you never go away hungry. Uh, Piercing Word is going to be there. The cost is $25 a person. Uh, if you're interested in attending that, uh, you can see Lynn Campbell, and she would be happy to... Uh, connect you with the information. Uh, we had piercing word here not too uh, long ago, and they were very well received among us. Um, let's see. So uh, next Sunday, uh, Phyllis and I will be away. Uh, Reverend Philippi will be filling in, and uh, he'll continue on in our study from Romans, so you won't have to, to miss a week on that. Uh, the altar flowers are presented to the glory of God in honor of the 11th wedding anniversary of Myrtle and John Ragsdale. Happy anniversary, Myrtle and John. Uh, our usher today is Glenn Worley. Our greeters today were Shirley and Andy Potts. And uh, there's a coupon information in the, the bulletin for the Shillington Grocery Outlet. Uh, you also have the, uh, the CPYU parent page uh, insert. Uh, this is a great school for parents and grandparents to see what our young people, our, our children and teens are dealing with in the culture today. And uh, it, it helps to keep you appraised of everything that's going on there. Uh, our flower sponsor is needed for July 17th. You can see the chart in the front entrance as you come in. And uh, the quote this week, uh, Rosalie has, uh, Patrick Henry shouted, give me liberty or give me death. The next generation shouted, give me liberty. And the present generation shouts, give me. I'm sure that's not true of all the generation, but we, we uh, really have become a narcissistic uh, society, uh, and this is why we need to continue to keep uh, pointing people to Christ, uh, that we can live a life that uh, radiates his love and grace. And with that, I will turn it over, the call to worship over to Doug and the prayer of confession. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather this morning appreciating our freedom to worship God. May God continue to bless the Church of Christ in this land. We draw near to the God who rules over all nations. May God continue to bless our country and all the countries in the world. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all peoples on the earth. May God continue to establish peace on earth and help us understand that it begins in our hearts. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we cry to you to heal our wounds. We call to you in distress and plead for your salvation. We have sinned against your law and failed to do your will. We confess that we've disobeyed your holy word. We pray, 
Purge our lives of selfishness and our hearts of bitterness. Lead us back to righteousness. Save us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we, uh, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather, to, to worship, to, uh, to praise, and, and to grow in uh, our knowledge and our love for you and for one another. We uh, pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might fill your presence in profound ways and equip us uh, as we go out into a world that is hurting, uh, that we can be salt and light to those we meet, that we can share the good news that is good. Uh, it's good because it tells us that your son lived, died, and rose again, and even now intercedes on our behalf at the right hand of the throne of God. And so we thank you, Father, for all that is ours in Christ. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Our uh, opening hymn today is hymn number 807, My Country, Tis of Thee, uh, 807. And you can stand and join me today. Amen. You may be seated. We, uh, as a church and a denomination, are very grateful uh, to those that continually support uh, our ministries uh, through time, talent, and treasure. Uh, we, we are aware that it is a difficult economy that we're living in right now with $5 a gallon gas, and that's driving uh, the prices up on just about everything. And so we are very grateful uh, to those that continue to uh, faithfully uh, partner with us week after week that we can make a difference for the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father God, we, uh, we thank you for faithful men and women, boys and girls that uh, dedicate their lives to, to seeking and serving and proclaiming and loving you through time, talent, and treasure. We pray, Father, that you would uh, just continue to enlarge our vision as a church. Uh, help us to, to be loving and compassionate and kind and help us to continue to meet the needs of the hurting and uh, the needy uh, in our community. And so, Lord, uh, bless us in this endeavor. Uh, continue to uh, use us mightily for these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Our uh, praise hymn uh, today is uh, 676 in the red hymnal, O oh, Jesus, I have promised, 676. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my God. Oh, let me feel thee near me, the world is ever near. I see the storms of so the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still above the storms of passion the murmurs of self-will and cheek to me assure me to hasten or control oh speak and make me O oh, Jesus, Thou hast promised to all who follow Thee that where Thou art in glory, there shall Thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. You know, I, I was saying this morning how I, I, it's, everyone needs to have an accountability partner. I have one that's very close to me. And I have some others in the community, but I also have Rosalie to help to keep me in track of things. Uh, I missed this this morning. The, the bulletin is presented to the glory of God in honor of all of those who have served and in memory of our fathers who both served in the army by Dave and Lynn Campbell. I don't know how I missed that. It must be the heat. Uh, but anyway, uh, speaking of anyway, we actually had a bird that joined us for the 8 o'clock service this morning. It's gone. Uh, for those of you that are, are flighty about birds, <laughs> uh, it stayed for the service, and after the message, it flew out the window and left. So, um, just as a side note, <laughs> I think that's the second time since I've been here that that's happened, that we've had a bird come in. The uh, sound lady for the 8 o'clock service was losing her mind because she is uh, uh, fearful of birds. <laughs> so, anyway, it was interesting to watch. Uh, pray for me. Um, 
I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, um, as we pray today, uh, Rick and uh, Shirley Moore uh, typically sit uh, with uh, John, uh, yeah, Jim and Robin and Joanne, uh, and um, Rick has had some heart issues in the past and uh, is not able to be here today, uh, but we're, we think he's on the mend, so we want to continue to pray for Rick uh, for the issues. He had uh, surgery not too terribly long ago, um, so we want to pray for, for Rick. We want to continue to pray for our, our country. Uh, we really are a hurting people, um, and I think people don't know what to do with, with everything that's going on in the world around us, and so we continue to trust God that no matter what, uh, he's with us every step of the way. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And, uh, you know, truly to, to avoid things that hinder and sin that so easily entangles, we've got to, to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. And, you know, I, I, I have this uh, prayer dialogue with God is, and God, I, I know that you're in control. And, and I know no matter what, that you're going to meet our needs. And, and yet I, I know that it's hard it's very hard at times to, uh, to see beyond that and so just increase my, my faith, increase my understanding. And, and I know that oftentimes when things seem the darkest, that God is working behind the scenes and he's working things out in his way and his time. And, and this is where faith comes in. So it's important that we continue to, to pray. And with that, let us pray. Father God, we... Uh, we ask that you would continue to bless your world, a good world that you created, and yet because of sin, our sin, it destroyed so much. And yet I know that you continue to provide and to meet our needs in Christ Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would bless us as a country as we celebrate this uh, birthday, our independence. We pray, Father, that you would uh, continue to draw men and women, boys and girls to you through your son, Jesus, as Savior and Lord. And, and for those that are, are hurting and those that are, are mourning and suffering the, the challenges of life, may they have uh, an extra measure of your presence. We, we do pray, uh, Father, for, uh, for Doug and Joanne Young and for, for Rick Moore and uh, for Robin Lash and uh, for so many uh, upon our prayer list, we, we lift them into your care. We thank you that you have not abandoned us to the grave. Instead, you have promised us life and life abundant, abundant and eternity one day as your children dearly loved. And we uh, do pray for your forgiveness that as a world we may seek you and serve you above all else. Uh, we pray, Father, for those in uh, hospital and nursing care. We pray for our shut-ins and those that are, are not able to be here with us today. We pray for our missionaries and the missions that we support. We pray, Father, that as a church that you would continue to use us mightily, that you would continue to surround us in your care, and that we would be found faithful at the return of your son, Christ Jesus, one day. We pray that you would help us to be faithful to spiritual disciplines of uh, reading the Bible, studying and applying it to our lives, and to be faithful in prayer and to be faithful in sharing the good news because the good news is still good. No matter how bad the world gets, we have your truth, Father, the truth that sets us free, and we know that through your Son, Jesus, we have this life, which he is the way, the truth, and the life, and our only way to you, Father. And so help us to carry this message of hope to those you put in our contact. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name, the Jesus that taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. We have been in the book of Romans. Uh, we're starting uh, chapter 2 today. Um, you know, really the book of Romans is all about salvation. It truly is. Um, we have um, uh, everything that we need uh, to, to have faith to believe. And Paul is writing this uh, letter to the church in Rome. There are new converts to Christianity there, although he has never been to Rome at this point. 
Uh, he is uh, sending them his credentials, what he believes, why he believes it, and for them to consider their newfound faith in how they live their life. And, and I, I think that we need as a, uh, a, as a uh, community of faith that we allow the word of God to shape our worldview. Uh, I, I think too often what's happening now is the culture that we live in is shaping how we think and how, how we behave. And, uh, you know, we're often caught up along political lines, bickering and fighting back and forth, and yet there is a right way uh, to live, a, a, a way that honors God. And uh, so we have this wonderful letter that uh, shares for us, and, and Paul's writing this letter from Corinth at this time, and it's a, a letter that shares for us to believe what our faith has received and to live in a way that honors God as if we do believe. And I think that's important, uh, especially in a culture today that is striving to, uh, to water down the word of God or to remove it, certain portions of it or to allow people to kind of live any way that you want to live. And everybody goes to heaven, so let's have a big party and celebrate. Uh, it's just not biblically true. Uh, the word is, is very clear. And uh, while we're not perfect, we're perfectly cared for in Christ Jesus, amen. Let me pray with you today. Father, I pray that you would uh, bless the, the reading of your word today, that you would uh, increase our understanding and our application. Uh, help us to, uh, to love you, to love others as self, and to, to strive to be all that we can be in Christ Jesus. It's a difficult world that we live in. And yet, help us to be dispensers of grace, love, and truth. But it's not the, the message as much as it is how we deliver it. That all that we say and do not only be pleasing to you, but may it fall on the ears of those outside of our doors in a way that uh, uh, conveys that we truly care about them, and that we love them, and uh, we desire for them to, to know the truth that has set us free. And so, Father, uh, bless this message today. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I'll back up for a minute in uh, Romans uh, chapter 1. Uh, last, uh, not last, we had the community service last week. It was very nice. The weather was great. Uh, the company was uh, phenomenal. And I thought everything went off without uh, any problems. Uh, but, uh, you know, before that, we were looking in Romans in the latter part of chapter 1, and, and, and Paul is talking about the godless uh, in the society. And uh, back in 1 in verses 16 and 17, this is uh, the reason that Paul gives. He says, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes the Jew first, and also the Gentile, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. We're all about what we believe. Just a little bit of faith goes a long way in the hands of a merciful God. You know, so many people that profess Christ as Savior and Lord, it's almost as if they're ashamed of the Bible today. It's almost as if they're ashamed to, to mention the Word of God uh, among people or to talk about Jesus. And, and that's a real tragedy because Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, delivers us from sin and, and gives us the right to be children of God. We have a wonderful blessing. And, you know, Paul says the Jews first because uh, God's chosen people were the, the Jewish nation, but then also the Gentiles were grafted in. And so we're all part of this. And this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. We have an instruction manual from God. We have the Bible. It, it tells us how to live a moral life that's pleasing to God, how to treat one another. You know, I, I think that sometimes we... Uh, we fail because we, uh, we begin to look at people that sin differently than we do and um, somehow think that we're somehow better. Uh, and there's a real problem with that. I mean, the people in the community, they, uh, they uh, a lot of times say, well, you guys are just a bunch of hypocrites. You've heard that, huh? 
yeah. And uh, to my response is, there's always room for another. And uh, the truth of the matter is, we are imperfect people made perfect in Christ. Not that there's anything special about us, but what God has done for us in Christ, it's him and him crucified. And so the righteous, those who believe, will live by faith. You know, all humanity is under the wrath of God. I don't know if you're aware of this, but God is patient. He's kind and compassionate. He's slow to anger. He's quick to forgive. But his patience has an expiration date. It will not last for all eternity. And this is why, as a church, we open our doors, we open our lives to share the good news because it is still good. No matter how bad the world gets, this news is good because it's the very news that delivers us from sin and death. You know, every person has a choice to make. Two types of people, those that believe and those that don't. And then you have that uh, middle class, those that believe but live like they don't believe. You know, we uh, have God's grace through faith to believe, or we have the, the choice to reject God's offer of salvation, but we're not free from the consequences of our choice. And so, like I say, two types of people, those who believe and those who do not, uh, and uh, we should be uh, desperately praying on how we can impact the world around us. I'm convinced of one thing. If we beat people up with the word of God, we probably don't have a good chance of seeing them want anything to do with God. I think we need to love them. We need to love them where they're at. It doesn't mean we have to agree with it. It doesn't mean we have to condone sin. But we need to love people where they're at and love them into the kingdom. You know, it is a process. I'm so grateful for those in my life that have impacted my life for the greater good of God and, and were gentle and, and patient and compassionate with me and not just beating me upside the head with the word of God and tell me how terrible of a sinner that I am. So let's uh, take a look at this. This is uh, Romans chapter 2. We're going to do the first 16 verses and uh, Pastor uh, John Philippi will do the, the remain, remaining part of uh, chapter 2 next week. And this is uh, God's judgment of sin. Now remember, at the end of uh, chapter 1, God was talking about the, the godless people, those that don't believe and they don't care how they live. They can live any way that they want, and they're content with that. Not only were they content with living a life of sin, but they encouraged others to do so as well. And so now we're talking about God's judgment of sin. He says, you may think that you can condemn such people, but guess what? You're just as bad. And you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked, you should and should be punished. You are condemning yourself, for you who judge others do these very same things. Now, we need to understand Paul is talking about the Jewish people's condemnation of the Gentiles, not liking the way that they sin and oftentimes sinning the same way that they did. Uh, how, how is it that sometimes we can justify our own sins? yet look down on somebody else that either is doing the same things that we've done uh, or, or maybe sinning differently than we do, but looking down on them as if somehow we're, we're, we're better. And so Paul is, is condemning the Jewish community. He's really talking about these self-serving moralists that, that think that they're okay and life and the world revolves around them. That, you know, God, I've got God in my pocket and I'm good. And, and I've got God's sword, and I can use it to cut any way I want. And, and you know, there are people out there that are like that, and that's why people say we're a bunch of hypocrites, because we say one thing, and then we do something else. And it's harming the heart of God. Paul is calling uh, the people of faith uh, to task. He says, when you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself, for you who judge others do these very same things, and we know that God in his justice will punish anyone who does such things. So we, we learned three things from this first part of chapter 2. Number one, God is a just God. and he, he will punish sin. There is a consequence of our sins, and God is going to judge. He's fair. Uh, we know that from verse 11 that God does not show favoritism. doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, black or white, where you live. Or, or what you've uh, accomplished in life or haven't accomplished. 
God is fair. He does not show any favoritism. And as far as the day it is coming one day when uh, God will judge, he will do that through his son, Christ Jesus. And so, you know, we need to, to take away from this that how are we treating people outside of our doors? Are, are, are we patient? Are, are we loving and, and kind and, and compassionate? You know, I, I've had uh, well-meaning Christians uh, share with me why I'm going to hell uh, because I don't speak in tongues and uh, because I don't do this and I don't do that. And uh, I'm sure they mean well, <laughs> but the, the message is not a message of love and grace. Uh, it's a message of, of condemnation. And, and we're not the judge. Now, that's not to say that we, we shouldn't surround ourselves with people who uh, can encourage us and can call us, you know, on our sin, right? I, I think we all need somebody that can come to us and love and say, hey, brother, hey, sister, you know, I love you, but, you know, what you're doing is not, not right. It's not what we're saying, but how are we saying it? Are we saying it from a place of humility? Are we saying it from a place of love? Or are we being critical of people that are sinning differently than us or are sinning and maybe in some cases uh, the same things that we've done. I think sometimes uh, it's easy to find fault in people when it's the same problem that you suffer with, but for whatever reason we have a better capacity of seeing it in someone else than in our, in our own selves. So I was saying, you know, the uh, these self-evaluations, it's interesting to see how other people view us because oftentimes our uh, understanding of who we are uh, can be uh, skewed a little bit because we uh, have a, a greater uh, uh, capacity to think we're better than we really are, and we're not. Uh, we're all sinners, all in need of the grace of Jesus. And uh, he says, since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think that you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same things? Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you away from sin? I'm, I'm glad we have a patient God. You know, I, I, I need somebody that's patient and kind and understanding uh, with me. I, I need a God that, that wants me to turn from sin, a God that wants me to turn to him, uh, to trust him for all things in life. And, you know, if we... Uh, we pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father. You know, we're calling God our Father. You know, if he's our Father, we should want to live a life that uh, radiates his love. We should want to, to turn from sin. You know, I think we should pray uh, asking God to reveal to us, where do I need to grow? And, and I think if you pray this, God's going to reveal it to you, especially if you're, you're reading the, the Word of God on a regular basis. God's going to speak to you. Uh, not an audible voice, but the Holy Spirit will speak to you nonetheless in areas that you're falling short. Uh, pray that we're not critical of, of other people. Uh, there's a lot of people in our culture that have been beaten up by society, by the church, by you name it, and they don't need another person kicking them down. What they need is somebody lifting them up, lifting them up in the love and grace of God. That's why we're here. It's, it's why, why we open our doors and, uh, you know, we just have to allow people to be where they are because God has been patient with us. So we too should be patient with one another. You know, we need to be careful that we don't look down on those who sin differently than we do. And I, I keep saying this because we keep doing it. We keep condemning people who are, are doing things differently than, than we do. And uh, the whole time we... We have our own issues. You know, uh, uh, gospels say that, you know, before we try to take that speck out of our brother's eye, we should get that log out of our own eye. You know, we, we look at the, the, the woman condemned to adultery and uh, going to be stoned, and Jesus says, okay, well, fine. Those of you without sin throw the first stone. What happens? The older people, the more why, they start leaving because they know they're sinners, and little by little, everybody goes away because they realize at the heart of it, we are all in need of the grace of God. Are we dispensing that grace to others outside of our inner circles? You know, it's God's desire that none should perish, that all would come to a place of salvation through his son, our Savior. You know, I, I look at the world right now and I think, oh my goodness, what a crazy world we live in. 
By the way, uh, our grandchild number six, our grandson, Nicholas Robert Shuey, was born on June 22nd, uh, weighing in at eight pounds, eight ounces. Mom and baby are healthy. I pray for my grandchildren in the world that they are growing up in. You know, I pray that we are a culture that is gone wild. And, and, and sad to say, many believers are being shaped by the culture they live in instead of allowing the word of God to shape them. So we must continue to pray. Uh, verses 5 through 11, it says, But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. You know, there were people in the nation of Israel that were stubborn and stiff-necked. We have passages that actually God calls them stubborn and stiff-necked. Um, I would venture to say with a, a great deal of certainty that there are people in our culture, in our realm, that are stiff-necked and stubborn. Uh, how many of you are stubborn and stiff-necked? Few of us are honest. <laughs> Uh, it's easy to see people that are stubborn and stiff-necked. We can't often see it in ourselves. So ask your neighbor, <laughs> am I stubborn and stiff-necked? They'll let you know. Trust me, they know. You know, we are storing up terrible punishment for ourselves by a refusal to believe the Word of God and to live by faith and to be the people that God wants us to be. You know, and Paul says, for a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will judge everyone according to what they have done. He will give eternal life to those who keep on doing good, seeking after the glory and honor and immortality of God's offers. Now, Paul is not saying that by your good works you are saved. No, he's saying it's grace by faith alone that one is saved. What he is saying, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, that you are going to want to do good things to please your heavenly Father. You're going to want to live a life that radiates the love and grace of Jesus. And uh, we know that these types of lives honor God. And not when we're, we're beating up people verbally and kicking them to the curb and wanting nothing to do with them and condemning them. But we know that God will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves. You know, those uh, who refuse to obey the truth and instead live lives of wickedness. You know, this is willful sinning and, and not caring about anybody else. You know, I... People just wanting nothing to do with anybody. It's all about me and all that I can get. And I, I could care less about anybody else. And, and so we know that God's anger and wrath will be poured out on people that live these types of lives. It says, there will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil. For the Jew first and also for the Gentile. Like I said, the Jews were first. They were the first uh, uh, family of God. You know, the, the nation of Israel and then uh, the Gentiles. But if we keep living a life where we know what we're doing is sin, is evil, and we're hurting people at all cost, and all we care about is ourself, uh, God can see through that no matter how much we tell ourselves how good we are. We can make ourselves feel like that we're better than we really are. You know, we need to pray. Pray that God reveals to us the truth in our hearts that we might truly learn to love people. I'm not saying that we condone sin. You know, that people ask me, Pastor, what do you think about this? And I say, well, God calls it sin. Well, what do you think about this exception to that sin? They generally have a follow-up question on, on when would this sin be okay? And, and the truth of the matter is the sin's never okay. I mean, divorce is not God's uh, ideal. God, God allowed divorce because of our sin nature. But that doesn't mean that, that God approves of divorce. You know, we, we just saw a, uh, a, a reversal in the Supreme Court. That is a hot button in our communities. And, uh, and yet, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the word of God is clear. Once again, we are to love people. We're not... And it always amazed me, when I was in Ohio, there were two things that were happening. Uh, we had uh, an abortion clinic where these uh, well-meaning Christians would uh, picket with signs and yell at these women, you know, as they're going in. 
and, and then we had the, the, uh, the ministry of life that would uh, come into the community and, and show the, the women the, the heartbeat of the child and, and offer support in any way that they could. And, and so I, I think that you know, just because uh, we are divided upon uh, by political lines, we, we need to be careful. We, we want to allow the word of God to be our guide. But once again, we need to make sure that as far as it depends upon us, we're, we're helping one another, we're not hurting one another. And I, and I know it's a difficult, difficult thing. And uh, I'm convinced that beating people up is not going to help us. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for Jew first and also for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. I, I absolutely love that, knowing that you know, it doesn't matter who we are, that God loves us equally, and that, that when it comes to the day of judgment, there isn't going to be any partiality or any favoritism because of who we know or where we were born or any of those things. It's going to be based on whether you have Jesus as Savior and Lord or whether you don't. It's just those two things. And God has given us a free will to choose. We, we can pick. We can choose to love God or we can say, I want nothing to do with you, God. That's your choice. I pray that there will be uh, people in that latter camp that will, will come and say, you know what, there is a, a God, a God of love and compassion, and I, I want him in my life. I, I pray that that happens. I, I pray that it happens on a regular basis, that we can see and, and hear of people that got away from a life of sin and came to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Paul says in Ephesians 2, verses 9 and 10, he says, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us in Christ Jesus so we can do good things that he's planned for us long ago. Do you ever consider yourself to be a masterpiece, God's masterpiece? You know, I look in the mirror and I keep seeing this old guy and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And yet we are God's masterpiece. He loved us so much. And he sent his son Jesus into this sinful world to redeem us, to set us free. That's love. And he, he just thinks we are uh, the catch me out. He thinks we are so special. And that's why he did what he did. You know, we're not saved by our good works, but we're going to be recognized by our good works. You know, and that's, that's really my prayer. God, help me to be more like Jesus and less like this self-centered person than I can be at times. And we all can get pretty narcissistic, can't we? You know, gimme, 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 gimme. I want, want, want. And all around us there are hurting people that need to know the love of God. Our, our faith should spur us on to want to be the person that God created us to be. Even before the creation of the world, God knew you and he had a plan for you to not only know him and to love him, but to proclaim him, to share the good news. The psalmist in uh, Psalm 62 and 12 says this, Unfailing love, O Lord, is yours. Surely you repay all people according to what they have done. You know, we're going to have a sit down with God one day. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and we're going to, to give an account of our lives. And I, I think some of it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And I think some of it's going to be absolutely painful. But the, the good news is, if you have Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you're going to be okay. You, you are a child of God, and you have eternity, all the rights and privileges of heaven. But some people are condemned already because they've refused God's offer of grace. You know, I look at the world around us and I look at all the terrible things that are going on and I think the good news is still good. This is the best news that I am not condemned to the grave. I am not condemned to be eternally separated from God. I have gained life and life abundant through Jesus. You're blessed. You're a masterpiece of God. Start living like you're a masterpiece. Let's finish this up. Uh, verses 12 through 16, says, When the Gentiles sin, they will be destroyed even though they have never had God's written law. And the Jews who do have God's law will be judged by that law when they fail to obey it. For merely listening to the law doesn't make us right with God. It is the obeying 
the law that makes us right in his sight. You know, we will be judged on what we do know, not on what we don't know. And, and you know, for the Jew who grew up in the system of, of the law, they can never live up to that. The law can only demonstrate how sinful we really are and how desperately we are in need of a Savior. And so we will give an account. We'll be judged by what we know. But here's one thing that I know for sure. You can take the most remote Ireland anywhere, the, the most remote people that have not seen modern culture, and I guarantee you they have a moral system of right and wrong. And, and in many cases they believe in something bigger and beyond them. We understand that as God. And uh, while there are people in the world today that uh, morally speaking live in some cases better lives than those that profess Jesus as Savior and Lord, they're still lost. But God will judge them on what they know, not on what they don't know, but as we learned in chapter 1 of Romans, uh, we're without excuse. God reveals himself through general revelation to what we can see and understand in the world points to a holy God. Since even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it, they demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and their uh, thoughts either accuse them or tell them that they're doing right. That's why I said we got to pray. pray. God, reveal to us, show us where we need to, to get better. Show us where our sin is harming our relationship with you and our relationship with, with one another. And God will if you, if you earnestly begin to pray that. But we, we need to understand that there is a way that is right and there is a way that is wrong. And God's word has given us a, a way to live that is right. And this is the message I proclaim, says Paul, that the day is coming when God through Christ Jesus will judge everyone's secret life. And I've been giving that some thought. You know, we're pretty good at uh, creating a public persona. You know, we can, uh, we can clean ourselves up a bit. We can dress a certain way. We can act a certain way. But we can still be uh, terrible sinners on the inside. And God uh, will judge everyone's secret life. You can look great on the outside. As a matter of fact, what did Jesus say about the Pharisees? He says, you guys are like whitewashed tombs. You look really good on the outside, but inside you're dead. You're death. And God will judge that. You can't fool God. You can fool people, but you can't fool God. You can't wink at sin. You can't live any way that you want to live. And the bottom line is, is God has a way that is right, a way that is pleasing, a way that helps us to, to live in his presence and to, to be uh, his children. You know, I always wanted to, to do things to, to please my, my parents and, and grandparents, although it didn't turn out that way all the time. Uh, I had enough woodshed experiences to realize that uh, I didn't always accomplish that. But that was my intent. So I wanted to do right. And I, I just understood that, that it was important, that you're representing the family. You know, we're God's children. We're representing his family. And we should want to live a life that radiates his love and grace. I'll close with this. In the book of James 1 and 22, it says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. There are a lot of Foolish people out there, uh, you know, uh, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. There's a lot of people out there that don't believe in God. I believe not only is there a God, but he loves me so much. He gave me his son to be my savior for you as well, for those who profess Jesus. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway is, look, go out in the world and love people. You know, I'm not saying you have to agree with their sin, but love them. Pray for them, encourage them, help them up. You know, it's but by the grace of God, any of us go. The people that took exception to last message in, in Romans 1 needed to hear the second part of this message today because nobody gets off scot-free. You just can't live any way you want to live and expect God to be happy about it. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this uh, 
Fourth of July weekend. Uh, happy birthday, Nana. We thank you for all that we have gained in this country. Love that is ours through Jesus. You've loved us so much that you call us your children, that you have given us the capacity to know you, to love you, and to proclaim you. And so, Father, continue to mold us and shape us to, to hate sin, but to love sinners. And we all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And so, Father, continue to work in our lives as only you can. For we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our uh, closing hymn today is hymn number 799, uh, America the Beautiful, 799. Please stand and join me. Worship with you today, as always, and uh, enjoy uh, the summer. Uh, for those of you who like heat, you're happy. Uh, for those of you who like winter, it'll be back uh, before too long. So hang in there. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.